TCU Athletics and U.S. Cellular present The Jeff Lebo Show. The Jeff Lebo Show is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the ECU Pirates. And now in his 25th year, the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Jeff Lebo Show. I'm Billy Weaver sitting in for Jeff Charles. Speaking of the voice of the Pirates, he was back behind the mic and back courtside after a long time away battling colon cancer. We'll catch up with the voice of the Pirates coming up later in the show. We'll also have highlights of the East Carolina UAB game and East Carolina's Saturday Conference USA matchup against Southern Miss. We'll also check in with Jeff Connors in our Camp Connors segment, and we'll have a special feature with Von Tay Leach, Super Bowl champion and former ECU Pirate. He was at the UAB game on Wednesday night. Stay with us. More on the Jeff Lebo Show right after this. We'll be right back with more of the Jeff Lebo Show, presented by U.S. Cellular and sponsored in part by bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction, and by Pizza Hut's $10 pizza. Cedric, it's Bruce from your old wireless company. Would you switch from U.S. Cellular back to us? We gave you this new Wonder Phone. It does everything. Does it make calls? No, but it can perform CPR, babysit your kids. It's got a pickup line generator. Um, it's got a virtual dog whistle. But does it get good reception where I need it? No, but it tells you if any of your family members are birds. Goodbye deception, hello reception. With the highest network satisfaction of any national carrier. U.S. Cellular, hello, hello better. The Jeff Lebo Show continues with sponsorship by Suddenlink. Bundle and save with Suddenlink. Call 1-877-807-3806 today. And by Coke Zero. Every sip of Coke Zero is like a game-winning shot for your taste buds. Welcome back, everyone. Jeff Lebo joining us, coaching a very special night here at Williams Arena Minji's Coliseum as you take it on UAB. Jeff Charles back behind the microphone for the first time in a long time as he had battled cancer. And I thought it was very classy that all the players during introductions came over and gave him a fist pump. I know you gave him an accolade before the game started. That was a special moment. Well, it was big to have him back. Uh, he was excited to be back. Our guys were excited to have the voice back and uh, give him a little dap before the game and get our guys fired up, ready to play. Speaking Speaking of uh, getting fired up, you guys got fired up last night. Took a little bit of time out of the gates. Uh, they got out to a 6 nothing lead, but then you guys settled in and really played well. Well, I thought we did. Uh, had the right mind uh, frame coming into the game. I thought defensively we did a lot of nice things. We took away the three-point shot, which is uh, a strength for them in the last six games. I thought our energy was there uh, defensively for, for the entire game. Our head wasn't always there. We gave, up a, we gave up too many layups in the game, but I thought you know we did a good job of taking away their strength to a 16 from three. East Carolina taking on UAB in a big conference USA matchup here at Williams Arena Minji's Coliseum. Let's take you out to all the action between the Pirates and the Blazers. East Carolina playing host to UAB. Jeff Charles back behind the microphone for IMG and the Pirate Sports Network. Coach, that's a great, uh, great sight to see on the other side. Well, it sure is. Nice to have Jeff back and uh, glad we could play well in this one in his, in his first return game. You get out to a 6-0 deficit. I tell you what, Rod Rucker was really good in that first uh, couple of minutes, but uh, Robert Sampson here gets loose uh, to give you the first points of the game. Well, uh, Rucker came out really uh, aggressive, and uh, we had Robert on him. He scored the first six. Uh, tough shots, uh, uh, but Robert here gets the dunk uh, to get us on the board to start. Then he steps out and hits a three. You know he's that, that kind of a guy that can step out and hit those three-point well, shots. Well, he is, and he's not shooting the, the high percentage that he has in his first two years, but uh, hopefully he can get it going. It'll make us a lot better offensive team if he can make some perimeter shots. Speaking of making him perimeter shots, uh, Maurice Kemp getting better at hitting from a little bit outside, and he gets the layup here, though, to give you a 13-8 lead. Well, uh, it's been effective offensively. Uh, again, in this game, it did a nice job of getting to the foul line, being very efficient, 7 of 10 from the game. You knew you would have to counteract their three-point shots by hitting a few of your own. Akeem Richmond comes up with a three-point shot right here. He had 15 points on the night. We had a couple from deep, and uh, you know, against the zone, UAB did zone us a lot in this game, and he was effective uh, out there uh, shooting the ball from the perimeter. Miguel Paul had 11 assists on the night, a great assist here underneath the Ty Armstrong for the dunk. Well, uh, Tosh love plays, loves playing with uh, Miguel because he gets him a lot of easy baskets there, and Ty finished it off with a two-hand dunk. Let's start action out in the second half here. Maurice Kemp with a three-pointer. You don't see a whole lot of threes from Maurice, but he can hit them. 
Well, he's shooting the ball a little bit better right now. So uh, he's kind of, his range is right at the three-point line. We've been working on it to get him back a step. And uh, in practice, he shoots him pretty well. You start to kind of extend the lead here. Miguel Paul hits a three-pointer. And then you go on a uh, stretch here where you score 11 points. And you get out to a 14-point lead. Miguel Paul here with another layup. And you're up 59 to 45. Well, we're really efficient there during that stretch. We had uh, Miguel off some high ball screens. Uh, Akeem Richmond makes a basket get there and uh, Miguel finally got on the board with a three-point shot. You lead by 16. You led by as much as 17 points in the second half, but uh, I'm sure you're not feeling real comfortable still yet. No, I'm never comfortable until the buzzer goes off and we're, at, we're ahead, but uh, we had a stretch there. I thought, uh, you know, coming up where uh, for about seven minutes we didn't attack uh, their zone particularly well and didn't finish, had a couple turnovers. Yeah, the UAB goes on an 11-0 run. They kind of make this one interesting, but then down the stretch with just about 237 left to play, Ty Armstrong gets a layup here. His only basket or only basket in nine minutes of play. Well, it was a big basket for us. Uh, you know, they fouled coming down the stretch, and I thought we did a nice job. Uh, at the end of the game making free throws. We've heard it in here before, free throws win ball games. You get eight straight free throws down the stretch and you kind of ice this one away. Well, that was a big win for us here at home. 74-61 is the final, East Carolina over UAB. Uh, I feel like I played pretty well. Uh, Miguel, he had 11 assists. He did an excellent job of getting me the ball and you know, we just executed the game plan. We did well defensively. We contained uh, the kid Jordan Swing he went one for five from the three-point line, so that's always good. Man, that was real big, man. When I first seen him in the gym, it was like a heart drop. <laughs> you know, Shamar always checks up on him and stuff, so we've been keeping him in our prayers and stuff and just see him make it to the game, man. We want to get this one for him. The final stats from this week's game are brought to you by your Carolina Chevy dealers. Feels great, you know. Um, just to, to go through all we went through this year, we were battle tested. Hey, at the end, we Super Bowl challenge. So feel real good. It's uh, the last three or four years. Everybody, uh, ECU has been represented, you know, um, in the Super Bowl. Just for me to go out there and, uh, and represent the Pirate Nation, not only on the field, off the field. That's something I take to heart and I try to do uh, on a daily basis. Welcome back into the show, everyone. Coach, you had another uh, double dip in Conference USA this week, a Wednesday night matchup against UAB. Now Southern Miss on the clock. Of course, Southern Miss, one of the best teams in Conference USA. They are. They play a different style. They press. They turn you over. They've got great athleticism. Uh, they play a unique style defensively with their zone, their amoeba zone. They're very active in it. Uh, tough test for us. We had a very nice treat with Jeff Charles back on the mic for the UAB game. He's back on the television broadcast tonight, joining Coach Lebo with the USM highlights. 6,011 on a snowy Saturday as we pick up the action. And Coach, you knew you had to bring a lot of energy to this game playing against Southern Miss. Well, we knew uh, their energy was going to be there, and we had to match, and I thought we did. I thought we had a good mindset coming into the game that we knew it was going to be a physical game. Uh, at all spots, and I, I thought we brought that early. Really did, and really carried the fight to uh, Southern Miss. You get a couple of back-to-back -back baskets here from Miguel Paul to go up 17-14, to 14, and then Maurice Kemp gets a hoop here, and you, you build the lead, actually have a double-digit lead here in the first half. Well, we're moving the ball pretty well against their zone, their matchup zone, their amoeba zone. It's hard to get good looks against it. They're one of the top teams in, uh, in the country in defense, and uh, I thought we did a nice job finding the open shooters and knocking them down. And talking about knocking him down, how about Akeem Richmond, coach? He knocks down a shot here to give the Pirates a 12-point lead. He was terrific. He knocked down eight threes in the game. Well, he was good, and uh, we knew he was going to play a lot in this game. We knew we were going to have him on the floor a lot because they were going to get, we get zoned the entire game. And he's a guy that can kind of make uh, deep shots, kind of contested shots, and uh, we knew we were going to give him a lot of looks tonight. Southern Miss makes a little run here toward the end of the first half. This was a big play for them. They get a steal and a layup uh, inside 10 seconds. We weren't real physical getting the ball inbounds on our screening action, and uh, they blew it up off of some uh, screening action and uh, turned it over and they converted on fast break. 35-31, Pirates lead at halftime. We pick up action now in the second half. And Coach Miguel Paul, who played 43 minutes in this one, he starts you off on the right track. He nails a three here. A yeah, big bucket here off of a set play to get him off of a ball screen. He made a good de uh, decision when they went under the ball screen and knocked it in behind. 
And Akeem Richmond again, uh, he starts firing him in. The Pirates go up by seven here with 12 minutes to go, and there were times he was really in his own. Well, he was, and uh, you know they were trying to take him away, so trying to put him in different spots where he could be effective uh, there. We did a good job of getting the ball to the high post and our high post guys finding him. Then you got the feeling Southern Miss was going to make some things happen, and uh, Davis is a guy that uh, really kind of took over the game for them. Well, we had a hard time stopping him towards the end of the game, and uh, I thought we got a little tentative in the zone offense, and uh, you know it, it, sometimes that happens. Uh, at the end of a game, and we need to, you know, to step up and make some plays. But give them credit; they made big offensive plays, tough offensive plays in the last five minutes of the game. They really did. And at the end of regulation, coach, it's 71-71. Then how did you feel going into the overtime period? Well, we, I, I didn't like the mentality of our group because we were up, I think, 10 with about five to go, and uh, you know they come back from behind and. Uh, and tie it up, but uh, you know, I thought in the overtime we did a nice job here from the start here and took the lead actually in overtime. Yeah, it really did. And then Miguel Paul fouls out late in the overtime period. Uh, tough to lose your point guard. Well, him and you know when you don't have anything else behind him without Corvon and you didn't have Ty Armstrong at the end of the game. Uh, it was tough for us coming down the stretch, but uh, still had a chance to win it at the end, just made a bad play. Southern Mississippi with a victory over the Pirates in overtime. They win by four, 86-82. It hurts. Bad taste in my mouth, man. But uh, we got to bounce back, you know, get ready for practice tomorrow and uh, get ready for this long road trip, you know, about to go on. Can't continue thinking about this. Got to put it behind us, you know. Time now for a look at ECU women's basketball. The Pirate women welcomed first place SMU to Minji's Coliseum Thursday night and Heather Macy's squad, well, they came out swinging. Senior point guard Celeste Stewart led the way. She hit for a career best 26 points, 19 of them coming in the second half. East Carolina would erase a seven point deficit on a 13-2 run. Brittany Edwards. Two of her 11 points, she also pulled down nine rebounds. Her sister Whitney had 14 points. East Carolina trailed 39-38 with 11 minutes to play, but they would end the game on a 25-8 run. 63-47 East Carolina with the win. They snap SMU's 10-game win streak and hand the Mustangs their first loss of the season. Oh, I, I'm very pleased, obviously, with our performance tonight. I thought Celeste Stewart uh, really stepped up and um, she did a great job for us, but the biggest thing was how we defended. I mean, to hold SMU under 50 points tonight was incredible, and I I'm really proud of these kids, and uh, I hope that they get a chance to, to take a few minutes just to, to understand where we've come, and I'm just incredibly proud of them. East Carolina improves to 17-6 and six on the season, 7-3 and three in conference play. They host Southern Miss today at 1. I'm Brian Mitor for the Jeff Lebo Show. Five. Three, two, one. Uh, today we're with Josh Hawkins, one of our cornerbacks. Uh, Josh saw some action last year. Uh, Josh is one of the fastest uh, guys we have on our team right now, also one of the most explosive for his position. Uh, for instance, he's got a great power clean. He power cleans about 300 pounds. Uh, today we're going to look at one of our new devices called a run rocket. We're going to perform some resisted drills using that device. Uh, this piece of equipment is a new piece of equipment called a run rocket. It's, it's an ingenious piece of equipment because you can adjust the resistance with it. Uh, it goes from 0 to 30, which gives us a lot of things that we can do from warm-up drills to strength type drills. And also it rewinds and you can run it out to 45 yards. So we're real excited about this piece of equipment, how we can use it in our weight room. Uh, right now we've got it on level 10, which is a lower level. This is a level from zero to 10 where we do some of our warm-up drills. Uh, we call this Man Run, and it's, it's uh, named after a guy named Ralph Mann. And uh, we, we've seen this probably in some of our other clips, but today we're using it with resistance as we move forward. Okay, trying to get 20 reps. Ready, go. Good. Okay, this is another drill in our warm-up package called a three-count pose chop. And basically, it's great for range of movement and for the athlete to be up tall with good angles and reiterating that good tall hip position. Ready, go. It's 
That's it, Paul. Good. Our next drill, we're going to perform out of a three-point stance. Uh, we've got about 15 with regard to resistance here. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to bound about 15 yards with maximum power into the ground and separation. So we're going to overcome this resistance by putting force down and back. Here we go. Go. That's it. Work up, work up, work up, work up. Good. Our next thing we're going to do is we're going to crank up the resistance to 20. And basically out of a three-point stance now, we're going to sprint as fast as we possibly can for 20 yards. Go. That's it. Work up. Work through me. Good. Another thing we can do is a position-specific drill. Since Josh is a defensive back, what we want to do now is we want to pedal. This is also another way that we can gain strength in the lower body. Okay, we're going to go about 25 yards. Ready? Go. Sit. Keep working. 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 Good. Anytime we can work uh, with resistance through a specific range of movement, we feel like we can make some positive steps in relationship to developing our athletes. Uh, Josh did a great job with those drills. Uh, he's got great motor learning capacity along with a high level of power, and so we look for him to perform well this spring. Remember, Pirate fans, you can be a part of the Jeff Lebo Show. It's Ask Coach Lebo, powered by U.S. Cellular. Text the word COACH to 94597. You'll be asked to submit your question to Coach Lebo. He'll pick one to answer each week. Here now is Coach Lebo. All right, this week's text question is from Russ in Beulahville. Want to know if I had known the statistic that we are second in the nation in scoring in the second half. I did not know that, Russ. That's a good uh, statistic. Uh, as long as you're not last in first half scoring, I think that's a positive. But uh, our second halves have been uh, very good offensively. We've been much better, much more fluid uh, in that second half. But a great statistic, Russ. Thanks for uh, asking that question. Welcome back into the show, everyone. And, Coach, this is going to be a tough week for you. You go on the road, you go to Tulsa, and then to SMU. This is going to be a very long, tough week for this Pirate team. Well, an important week, obviously, playing on the road, always difficult, into Tulsa. We leave on Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the morning to, to go to Raleigh. We don't come back. We play uh, SMU on Saturday at 2. Can't get out of Dallas that night, so we won't be back until Sunday afternoon. I guess it kind of gets you tuned up for a Conference USA tournament where you're going to be on the road for an extended period of time. Well, we hope if we can win and stick around like we've done in the past, but uh, this is an important uh, week coming up for us, and uh, obviously Tulsa, SMU, get a chance to go uh, back uh, and uh, play against the guy that I played for and Larry Brown at SMU. Well, good luck on the uh, trip, and we'll see you next week. All right, thank you. That's Jeff Lebo, head coach of the ECU Pirates. We'll join you back here next week to take a look at two very tough road games at Tulsa and SMU. We'll see you then. The Jeff Lebo Show has been presented by U.S. Cellular. Hello, better. This is an exclusive presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.